there garden fans and welcome back to the permaculture homestead in today's episode i just want to hit home to you that you don't have to live on 30 acres off grid to provide for yourself a large portion of your food supply you can grow a lot on 2,000 square feet in the suburbs and today i want to show you guys how me and my wife are doing that let's get to it me and my wife utilize high density companion planting in order to get a maximum yield in a small space in this three foot by six foot plot, me and my wife are growing things like catnip and mint for teas. You can see they're going to flower right now. We also grow some annuals like tomatoes, which we harvest on a daily basis. The tomatoes are companion planted with things like basil and carrots. So we get basil and make pesto sauces with. We've made tomato sauces with the tomatoes for pastas. And we eat the carrots just straight up. Also, we finally got some peppers coming in here. So in just a small area, we've got four different annuals growing all together, and they love growing with each other. They're having no problem producing for us right here and right now. There's no need to grow in row and column styles. Bunch them up together using the square foot style, and you can have an abundance of food. I laugh when I look at this. Uh, old James Prigioni put up six foot poles, and I probably should have done the same. Along with the annuals we got, we got some perennials growing here too. Things that are going to stay here forever and come back year after year. That being our goji berry. The goji berry are doing really well for us this year. We're able to store uh, a lot of these goji berries. We're drying them and freezing them. And just this is our perennial food supply. It's something that we're going to have around the whole year. So just like that, in a small space, we're able to jam-pack full a whole bunch of food. Also here by our back door, we got a raspberry patch that has really gotten overgrown just this year. It started out as two raspberry canes just last year, and they've put on so much growth. There's also mint growing here, annuals like a rose campion, just to bring in pollinators. I've got a penny royal as a ground cover, also to bring in pollinators. But the raspberries themselves are awesome, and I highly suggest anybody be growing raspberries. We got a spring crop off of last year's canes, and we're going to get a fall crop off of this year's canes. This year's canes will also provide for us a spring crop as well. So we're getting a lot of raspberries. Obviously, you can see the pollinators are here. They're loving it. We're all organic and don't use any sprays or pesticides. So the raspberries have been a great blessing for us this year. We've got tons of food off of those. Another high-density companion planting we got is the rabbit poop veggie plot. So here in between seasons it's kind of looking a little sickly and dead and I think we've harvested about all the goody we could off of the annual vegetables. The green beans have died back. We've harvested all the spaghetti squash and are storing them now. We still got basil growing and of course the sorghum is putting up its grain heads right now. We're going to be able to long-term store the grain. We're going to grind it down and provide for us flour. And eventually we're going to get a cane press here and try to make molasses too. So here's a small area that's a, once again about three foot by six foot growing a, a real high density of planting that has provided for us food all of spring and is going to provide more for food for us in the fall. Uh, in between my elderberry and peach row here I got another pile of sorghum growing up. So these guys were planted about a, a month after those. So let me keep moving quickly around the food forest, guys. There's so much growing on, it's hard to tell it to you all, but we got blackberries and rosemary and lavender, and here's an update on the sweet potatoes. I'm starting to work the vines into the food forest floor. I'm hoping that some of these vines will root from the buckets into the food forest so that next spring I got a nice sweet potato ground cover. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you all abreast of that situation. Uh, while I'm here in this small space, let me show you what else we got growing. We got things like loofah. I want to thank Ian over at Lolita's Garden for the seeds on that one. And we've also got blueberries. The late seasons are just about done fruiting. So here's another small space where we've got container plants, we've got stuff in the ground, and it's all producing a lot of food. So I'm going to step back and show you the whole food forest here, glossing over. It's hard to take the whole thing in. There's just so much growing on brassicas, moringa, here's a peach with our chives around it and more carrots in the box that we're slowly harvesting. We've got a ground cover of buckwheat that we save the grain from and grind the grain and use for flour. So my gosh there's so much here. 
Here's pineapple guava that's getting established, and I'm hoping next year will fruit for us. Right here, I've got the best moringa on the yard right now. It's probably about three feet tall. I love how the leaves taste. They got a nutty flavor to them, and they put up an edible pod. Uh, behind that, I've got a mulberry tree with its food structure around it. We've got raspberries, and here's my favorite herb, hyssop, anise hyssop. Um, but this mulberry has got all types of friends around it, just like it would in the, in, in, in the woods. We've got raspberry plants. There's still yarrow growing and oregano. I'm going to step back once again, show you some more stuff here. <sighs> so much. Persimmon growing. We've got more buckwheat at a different station. So I've got buckwheat all over the place growing at different times. So we've got a continual harvest of buckwheat seeds. And it's better than growing grass. Uh, my upper swale area has got another mulberry that is getting established. Right next to it, there's blackberries. And the blackberry patch is doing really good. I'm starting to move the cages a little more centralized so that I got more space to grow vegetables next year. I'm thinking about filling up the cages with uh, leaf mulch too, so maybe I can grow vegetables in the cages themselves. Keep in touch on that one. That'll be a fun little project. Uh, in between these two rows, like in between the swale, once again, I've got a row of blackberries and more moringa growing. Guys, there's so much food here, and it's not even all producing yet. A lot of the trees, like this pawpaw and some of the peaches, hadn't really fully set fruit yet. In their first year, they kind of put growth on, and in the second year, they put on some fruit, but they hadn't really, a lot of the trees I got dropped their fruit here in the second year. But we're still getting tons of harvest from the berries and from the veggies. Uh, lead jujubes looking good, another persimmon. My corn patch, you can see it's, it's dead and dying, and all the vines that were here are dead. We've harvested and post pictures on Facebook of all of our harvests so you can check out what we've been growing on and eating on a daily basis. And more herbs, of course, are growing. There's so much growing on, guys. It, it would be really hard for me to... <laughs> it would be a really long video, but I want to just give you a whole glossing over today and just kind of show you that on 2,000 square feet, you can grow a lot of food. And this food forest isn't even at peak production yet. We've got tons of stuff. Here's grapes with Jerusalem artichokes and beautyberry. Here's another blackberry vine, and we got buckets everywhere. Here's papaya I'm growing in pots. There's just so much food, and you can do this too. You can grow most of your food in the suburbs. You don't have to have a whole bunch of land. You can have bees and trees and fruit that will produce for you immediately while you're waiting for your trees and stuff to get producing. So that's it. I hope I could really get that message across today, guys. I, I really love y'all. I appreciate y'all watching this homestead grow. Keep in touch because this is just the beginning. I got a strong feeling next year we're going to get a lot of fruit from our trees. Uh, keep in touch for more updates. If you guys got any questions, as always, please just ask. Thanks for watching, guys, and God bless. How many last ones were the last one? Just the last one, right?